If you've been keeping an eye on SSD prices lately, you've probably noticed a steady decline. NVMe drives are becoming way more affordable. However, if you're seeking the advantages of lightning fast PCIe Gen 5 drives, you might need to invest a tiny bit more money. If budget isn't really a concern, you're in the right place. If top tier speed is what you're all about, and if that's your jam, the new two terabyte Seagate Fire CUDA 540 will be exactly what you've been looking for. But let's dive into the details. First and foremost, to fully leverage the speed of this drive, you're gonna need a motherboard and CPU combo that supports it. So anything that's either a 12th or 13th gen Intel CPU or Ryzen 7000, that's gonna work. But for now, that compatibility is non-negotiable. That's what you have to have. The Seagate Fire CUDA 540 M.2 SSD stands as Seagate's most advanced consumer grade M.2 to date. It's designed for PC enthusiasts, for gamers, for overclockers, and for high performance workstations. It uses the ultra fast new PCIe Gen 5x4 interface that maintains a peak read and write speed of around 10,000 megabytes per second. This performance oddly smashes PCIe Gen 4 and even the previous generation 530 and 520 offering a serious uplift in performance with PCIe Gen 5. The FireQ to 540 uses the new NVMe 2.0 standard and the 540 also achieves these crazy speeds with random read and write IOPS of around 1.5 million IOPS. And like several other PCIe Gen 5 drives available on the market right now, the FireQ to 540 also uses that Fizen E26 controller to achieve its maximum speed. The FireQ to 540 also uses 3D TLC NAND flash and can stain up to about 2000 terabytes written, which means you can rewrite about a terabyte of data every day for around five years. It also is fully PCIe Gen 4 compatible, and if you've got a board that doesn't have Gen 5, you can still use this drive. I tested this and it worked with no problem. So if you wanna buy it now and then upgrade to Gen 5 later, you're not gonna have a problem. It's also backed by a five year limited warranty with an estimated usage lifespan of around about 1.8 million hours. That's about 205 years if you're counting. While all this technical info is important, let's shift gears and focus on testing because that's what you're here for. We ran our regular set of storage benchmarks but decided against doing the 16 gig and 32 gig runs, instead opting for one gig, four gig and 64 gig runs instead. Each of the drives was filled to 50% capacity and we ran the test 20 times to yield an average speed across all of these tests. We also threw in the new two terabyte gigabyte PCIe Gen 5 drive because we wanted to know what the differences were with another Gen 5 drive. I'll come back to that a little while later as well because it gets pretty interesting. We also thermally tested the 540 as well. Here's what we don't test. We don't test boot times. Boot times are a bit of an invalid metric. While it's cool to have your computer boot as fast as possible, it's not accurate when you have to consider there's other platforms that take a lot longer to initially post. So. The metric can just be thrown out of whack with that. We also don't test game load times because that's also not a valid metric. There's just too many variables for games loading on a PC. So it's just not very accurate, but let's jump into the data, break yourselves. There's lots of graphs, chock full of information. I'll explain them as we go through. We're also showing drives that we've tested in the past compared to the 540. These drives are chosen because they're popular choices of drives and they come in at decent price points, although they're not all gen five drives. Yeah, there's just not that many out there on the market. Apologies in advance for all this information. And you can use that pause button if you wanna pause this video for a bit longer to see what all of the graphs are. See you on the other side. Essentially what these graphs are showing is the performance difference between whether it's a sequential read, which means something that is read in an order and a random read and write, which means the disk is randomly accessed to any part of the block data on the drive. You will notice that at lower thread and queue depths that the speed will be much slower. So especially here for this random 4K test with the queue depth of one and a single thread, it is much lower than expected. And even certain PCIe Gen 4 drives will perform better than a PCIe Gen 5 drive with this type of test. We're seeing this happen with the Samsung 980 Pro in this example. However, if we move on over to something with a high Q depth with more threads, it uses a lot more of the CPU and can yield really good random performance. But this is 
a, a little bit of an unrealistic test. If we move on to the four gig test, what we're seeing is that both the Seagate drive and the Aorus drive have the same sequential read access. If we look at the write performance, we're seeing that the Aorus drive is slightly faster, but I would say that that is within a margin of error. That's just too close to call. A lot of this data can be found very useful for your use case, but a lot of the data we're seeing here is pretty standard storage benchmarking data and they can be applied to real world use cases, especially if you're copying large files and large data sets to storage, let's say huge video files, audio files, big ISO files and entire game folders that are compressed as well. As usual with any benchmarking information, take what you're seeing with a grain of salt because these are the results recorded on the day that we did the testing. So your results may vary and your mileage may vary. I wanted to mention that the labels on these graphs got a little bit mixed up when we were exporting the graphs out in the animations. So the label for the Gigabyte PCIe Gen 5 drive is actually the Aorus 10,000 PCIe Gen 5 drive and vice versa. So hopefully that clears up a little bit of confusion here. And yeah, I guess we all make mistakes sometimes, right? After thorough analysis, it's clear that the Seagate Firecuda 540 is one of the fastest drives that we've tested to date. One of. Because <laughs> the Aorus Gen 5 drive is faster in some tests. The reason for that though is, and this is where it gets interesting, both drives share the exact same Fizen E26 controller, resulting in nearly identical performance figures. In fact, the results are so close that they would often fall within a margin of error, leaving the final judgment whether or not to choose the Seagate drive or the Aorus drive completely in your hands. Not only that, if we take a look at the PCB of each of these drives, they're exactly the same. And what do I mean by that? I mean, they're exactly the same. They use the same flash modules. They have the same surface mount components. The PCB layout is identical. They're the same drive. The only difference I can tell is the Aorus drive has a sticker on the drive and that works as a bit of a heat spreader. We've seen this in the past with some drives too. And also when drives are new like this, sometimes they'll just be the same drive, but rebranded, especially when it's in the early stages of a new standard. So them being identical really isn't a surprise here. We also saw this with Gen 4 drives as well, but let's shift focus for a second. Let's address the topic of heat sinks because this is very important. Right. While many PCIe Gen 4 drives typically include an integrated heatsink or one in the box, the Firecuda 540 doesn't include one, meaning you'll need to have a motherboard with a beefy M.2 heatsink. That's why we opted to test with the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. The included heatsink is huge and it's more than adequate for cooling these new PCIe Gen 5 drives. We tested both the Aorus and Seagate drives with the same heatsink, so the thermal results and the performance would be the same across the board. It's why we didn't use the included heatsink with the Aorus drive because it wouldn't have been fair. But unsurprisingly, when we compared the Seagate Firecuda 540 and the Aorus drive with thermals, they're about the same with the Aorus drive at idle, having the biggest variation in temperature. And that's probably to do with that heat spreader sticker more than anything else. And I also mentioned that before, but if we go back to what I said at the start about PCIe Gen 5 NVMe drives, they're more expensive, but the trade-off here is blistering speed. Although from what we saw at the tests, it's, it's negligible, but also not. 
we'll leave that up to you. Whether these speeds are a necessity and worth the investment, ultimately, again, it rests with you. Like, it's not up to me, you choose. On average, you're seeing like between 3000 megabytes per second difference between Gen 4 and Gen 5 on the top end. And Gen 5 is gonna get faster. Personally, while the faster speed is cool for my use case for video editing and whatnot, it's probably not required and maybe it's good for your use case, but right now, it just might not be for you. The price premium for both of these drives and all of the Gen 5 drives does exist. And as mentioned, if you really want the speed, the option is there, but whether or not it's gonna be something you notice, again, will depend on your use case. For those who are interested in the Seagate Fire Cuda 540, they have two different capacities. They've got the one terabyte version and the two terabyte version. The one terabyte version is around 200 US dollars or around 359 Aussie dollars. And the two terabyte version is around about 320 US dollars or around 589 Aussie dollars. The Aorus drives, surprisingly, are almost the exact same price, but they have an included heatsink. So yeah, that's one thing to consider as well. But let me know if you guys have a Gen 5 drive and what your experiences have been with them so far. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. I've got a couple ideas and a couple things I wanna do with these Gen 5 drives as well, but let us know <laughs> if you're keen to see an all out speed PCIe Gen 5 RAID 0 setup in the comments because it's something that I'm playing with at the moment. But if you wanna see a whole video, yeah, let me know. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there down below. And please like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Also, share it around if you found this video interesting. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. Yeah, it's, it's rather interesting that we find ourselves in the situation again where the Gen 5 drives use the same PCB and same controls and everything. But again, when we saw Gen 4 came out, we saw the same thing with the Aorus and the Seagate drives as well, with the Firecuda 520 and the Aorus Gen 4 drive. So no surprises here for me. Obviously, they're all just made in the same place and stickers are put on them as they roll out the door. Thanks for watching.